Welcome on board Swiss Air First Class. What's up Nonstop Nation? Today's video is sponsored by Omaze. I have partnered with them to offer you the chance to win first class plane tickets worth up to $20,000. And even better, every donation you make supports a vital cause. All you have to do is go to omaze.com slash nonstop Dan and enter for your chance to win. More details later in the video. You click this video after seeing the title and thought, who is this spoilt clickbaity asshole who's about to complain about flying first class? This is what is wrong with humanity. I get it. Let me tell you a little about how I approach a video like this. First and most importantly, I ain't rich. Honey, if I was rich, do you think I'd be embarrassing myself talking to a camera in public in first class surrounded by rich people no less? No, I do this so I can fly like this at all. So if I'm not rich, how do I pay? I must get free tickets, right? No. I pay for all my tickets myself, which allows me to be entirely honest with you all in the nonstop nation. I find other ways to fly for cheaper, and today that happened to be very complicated, but it allowed me to fly one of the world's two most exclusive or hard to access first class products, this time on Swiss. I'll cover my fluke rebooking experience toward the end of the video, but sadly I haven't found some hack that will make this redeemable for most people. I just got really lucky. What makes my reviews valuable to you guys is that I make honest comparisons. I'm not comparing Swiss first class to flying economy because obviously this is astronomically better. I'm also not showcasing the Swiss first class experience without putting it into context. I'm comparing Swiss first class to other first class experiences to see how this stacks up and whether or not it's worth the hype and exclusivity. A ticket on this flight costs $8,000 one way. Obviously, you expect the experience to be insanely good in every way for that price. Also, I'll be comparing this experience to Lufthansa first class a little along the way. So without further ado, let's go. Welcome to this early morning in Gothenburg, Sweden. Time to get tested, woo! I decided to risk everything for convenience, so I scheduled my test 30 minutes before check-in closed with express care at Landvetter Airport. The test was even more convenient than I'd expected and I was in the terminal five minutes after arriving at the airport hotel to take my test. Okay, bye mom, love you. Bye. It's pretty much exactly a 12 hour trip, not bad. Next, I wandered through the busy airport toward my beautiful A220 taking me to Zurich. So you all know from the title what I'm flying today, and I have to be honest, I don't feel the same level of excitement I feel to fly many business class flights. And the reason I think is that I honestly get quite nervous when I'm flying first class, I get overwhelmed. I mean, it's it's not only the thing about fitting in and you know, the flight attendants being like, does this guy belong in first class? But also just the overwhelming feeling of how do I capture the experience? Because I know even if I'm nervous now that it's gonna be absolutely incredible and I can't wait to share it with you. A220, what a beautiful aircraft. Can't wait to get on board. Quickly for context, why am I taking this flight? Well, as you guys might know by now, I'm half American and half Swedish, meaning half my family lives in Gothenburg and the other half lives in New York. My entire American family has now been vaccinated and my 93 year old grandma, who's one of my favorite people in the world, is obviously reaching that age where you appreciate every moment you get to spend together. So I decided to head over and spend some fully vaxxed quality family time since I'm going to be traveling like crazy this summer and fall. Oscar and I boarded last and saw that row one was empty, so we asked the flight attendant if we could move to have more space between us and other passengers. He said unfortunately their mechanic was meant to sit there. Now not to be cynical, but as someone who has flown a fair share of business class flights on European airlines, I can almost guarantee a standard response would be, so no, you can't switch you filthy stupid no good customer. But to my delight, the crew member said, 
but of course you can sit wherever you want. Our mechanic takes second priority, so feel free to move. I was a little surprised and also realized this could end up being a decent flight. It had been two years since I flew the A220 last and one thing really struck me. I prefer this so much to any other narrow body plane. Why? The windows are literally twice the size of the A320 and the cabin is so modern. Now this isn't actually an Airbus plane, it's a Bombardier airplane, which explains why the windows are so big. Also, the lavatory is actually designed to fit human beings, as opposed to the lavatories on other modern aircraft. The fact that Swiss primarily uses the A220 to many European destinations is a legitimate reason to choose them over other Lufthansa Group airlines, in my opinion. The interior and seat leave a lot to be desired, as with all European airlines apart from Turkish and maybe Aeroflot, although they're not really good substitutes for most routes in Western Europe, so you're stuck with this. Besides the bad seats, I find the cabin finishes to be sleek at least. Anyway, let's get out of here, shall we? Engines up, roar, lift off, through the clouds, food. So Swiss recently introduced the enhancement of buy on board, which is in fact the opposite of an enhancement, but whatever. This menu for being brand new looks very 2010 to me, I don't know. You know what else looks 2010? My food. It looks like it was made in 2010 and left out, that is. If this is what one of Europe's supposedly premium airlines serve in business class for breakfast on a two hour flight, I'm lost. At least they gave a generous serving of hummus because we all know chickpeas cost a fortune to provide. Well, I appreciate the generosity in helping to keep me skinny, so thanks Swiss. To counteract any concern of being skinny, I bought a cookie from the economy class buy on board menu, mainly because a lot of you guys were DMing me and telling me to try this cookie. Look how soft. This is when buy on board comes in handy, but a small suggestion, how about they offer this selection for free to business class passengers instead of serving them a stale yet soggy sandwich from five days ago. After enjoying my cookie and dropping my phone into the abyss, I got some work done. Sadly, there was no Wi-Fi despite being on such a new plane, and as it turned out, Wi-Fi seems to be a problem for Swiss based on my second flight as well. Stay tuned. Once again, I gotta say the flight attendants were great. They came around to personally tell each passenger their connecting gate and just give us general connection information. Soon enough, we caught our first glimpse of the country that everyone thinks of when I say I'm from Sweden. Welcome to Switzerland. We pulled into a bus gate and saw a business class bus to pick us up. A business class bus makes a huge difference. Which was very nice. If only our connecting flight in first class was such a luxurious experience. Now, Zurich Airport is spread out over three concourses. The two main ones being concourse A and concourse B slash D. Normally, most widebody flights require that you take a train from the main terminal that runs under the ground, where they have images of Switzerland and play sounds of cows mooing. This brings you to Concourse E. Due to Miss Coronavirus, Concourse E has temporarily closed for business while she waits for her fourth stimulus check. So all long haul flights depart from Concourse D instead, meaning there are a lot of bus gates. Super excited to go check out the lounge the big international concourse here, the E gates, is closed. So we're going to the lounge at the A gates, where there should also be a lounge for first class passengers. Swiss lounge is A, this must be it. First, we went to enjoy the Swiss first class lounge, which was very open, according to Swiss's own website. Oh, it's not open, okay. But this is the substitute? I was stressing myself out just breathing in there. That is how suffocatingly quiet it was. As you can tell, there's also no food or drink whatsoever, but that's due to COVID restrictions in Switzerland. Now for the moment you've all been waiting for, Swiss first class. 
I think Oscar summed up the ground experience perfectly when he said, it would be nice to get some recognition that you're flying first class somewhere along the way because up until this point, we've had the exact same experience any other passenger would. But you know what, I like the suspense, so I'm gonna save the ground experience and the other negatives toward the end and shake up the order a little bit. By the way, if you're interested in more first class stuff, check out the video I did on taking a first class train in Uzbekistan. Yes, you heard that right. It's a pretty hilarious video if I can say so personally. Upon boarding, I immediately noticed what would be the highlight of the flight. The cabin crew was absolutely fantastic. They all had so much experience on how to customize the service for each type of customer. And that was apparent immediately upon boarding since they were cracking jokes and were just incredibly charming. They seemed to genuinely like their jobs and everyone came around to welcome us on board at the seat. Swiss operates a fleet of 12 Boeing 777-300 ERs. Interestingly, Swiss is one of the only airlines in the world that offers first class on every single widebody aircraft in their fleet, including the A340 and their most common aircraft, the A330. Since the 777 is the widest of these aircraft, you can also expect the seat to be the widest. I chose seat 2A, which turned out to be more spacious than seat 1A due to the curvature of the fuselage. Now we just need to talk about business class real quick, because here all seats definitely are not created equal. Look at these seats, 4G and 5D. Can you see how they're basically in the aisle with no storage area at all? Now look at 4J and K plus 5A and B. These seats also have almost no storage area. Compare them to the other seats and there's a huge difference. Not good. Now for the cabin. What do you guys think of it? Please discuss in the comments. Personally, the cabin design isn't my favorite. Yes, it's sleek and understated, but it's a little too understated for first class. The colors feel not super fancy to me, almost Ikea-esque. The seat enclosure itself feels spacious and there's plenty of space to do whatever you please, whether that's work, yoga, or recording dance TikToks. The seat itself isn't very wide for a 777 and the wall for privacy isn't especially high either. The seat is supposed to be fully enclosed when you close this door slash closet, but doesn't this just feel so weird? It's supposed to be a door, but it's obviously not a door. It's a closet, right? It has these two little storage units built in and an awkward little mirror. Still, this is a far better seat than on Lufthansa, which, well, doesn't have a wall or door at all. This is the door on the Swiss seat. Note how it also doesn't close all the way. Now for some of the other seat components. This is a second privacy divider on the side of the seat, which you extend at the push of a button. There is plentiful storage on the other side of the seat. This is where you find everything of importance, namely the remote, your seat controls, a nice lamp for decoration and ambiance, and the hefty tray table. There's really nothing else you need here. Besides, the footrest doubles as a buddy seat, more on that later. Moving on to the entertainment screen, it is enormous, high quality, and has a decent selection. Please let me state for the record that this is an excellent seat. It's comfortable, private, spacious, modern, really everything you could ever want or need. But is this a revolutionary or even especially noteworthy first class seat? No, absolutely not. Would I be happy if Lufthansa introduced this seat? Heck yeah. Would I be happy if Air France introduced this seat? Definitely not. Prior to takeoff, they cracked open the champagne just for me, which I felt really bad about since I could only drink about half a glass before being ready to pass out. The last time I had alcohol was 15 months ago flying Lufthansa first class, so I wasn't really prepared. So as I was struggling to stay awake as the weakling I am, one thing I found really interesting was that due to our delayed departure, we used the opposite runway from all other departures to save a few minutes in flight. While all other flights were taking off from runway 16, we took off from runway 37. Special treatment. Speaking of taking off, will you help me in joining the race to 500,000 by the end of the year? Clicking subscribe is free, it takes literally a second, and it could win you a free flight with me in Qatar Airways Q Suite next year. Our flight today takes us from Zurich to New York in just under eight hours.
After takeoff, Santa Claus came by to make sure I had everything I needed by providing gifts including a massive amenity kit, pajamas, slippers, and more. Now this is actually pretty incredible because this is a useful toiletry kit for the future. It's from Bali. Bali, Bali. Okay, this really feels like it's Christmas here, opening a Christmas present. We have these, a toothbrush, toothpaste, sleeping mask and socks, tissue, cosmetic, earplugs, shoehorn, and a comb. Kit within a kit. Oh wow, what is this? The amenity kit was super well stocked and had some sweet Swiss touches. <laughs> I especially loved the three reusable face masks with the Swiss logo. They have sure come in handy. I got an extra amenity kit from the crew which I'm selling for charity on my website in the description. I'll show you guys the pajamas when it's time for a nap a little bit later. Another highlight of this flight besides the service was the food. So let's dive right into it, shall we? If you prefer to eat vegan sausage rolls, Swiss has catering by the world's supposedly oldest vegetarian restaurant called Hitler. Hiltel, Hiltel, Hil, Hiltel. Yes, here's the menu. As you can see, most of these dishes are different from the ones I'll be getting, but this can help you fantasize about what you'd get if you don't prefer vegan sausage rolls. Here's a quick look at the drink menu. Although I couldn't drink so much, I really enjoyed the Laurent Perrier Grand Siècle Champagne. I also really enjoyed the green tea, which I started my lunch with. The fun part of Swiss Verse is that you can dine together with a companion, so I headed up to 1A for lunch with Oscar. Lunch turned out to be quite the affair, with seven courses spanning almost two and a half hours. We ate slowly to enjoy it, so I'm sure the process could be faster if you want. Of course, you can also dine whenever you wish. So the dining extravaganza started with this amuse bouche, which was enormous. The hummus and roasted cashews were delicious, and you'll see the table setting was gorgeous too. The actual appetizer followed, which consisted of a luxurious cucumber salad and this far more appealing bulgur salad. They also brought out this 3-in-1 bread, which I thankfully didn't dig into because the 7 courses turned out to be more than enough on their own. The next dish was a salad served avec le finest roasted peaches, pumpkin seeds, et le sweet potato. It was très bien. And it was served with this assortment of vinegars and olive oil. Assorted vinegars really excite me more than they should, so this was certainly a highlight for me. At this point, I was stuffed, so what could go wrong with having four more courses, right? Next up was some carrot soup. When I hear carrot soup, I don't think, wow, this is gonna be good, I cannot wait. When I tell you this was the best carrot soup I've ever had, it was so good. The lovely flight attendants also brought out some samosas as the fifth course. Just like the carrot soup, samosas terrify me. I've been served samosa hot pockets too many times in economy to trust that they can have any redeeming quality on a plane. Just as with the soup though, these positively surprised me and were flaky in a good way. Next was the main course and at this point I was already about to pass out. Ironically, this was one of the least special dishes of the meal consisting of gnocchi in a tomato sauce. I'd rather have what I was served on Turkish Airlines last month. Still, I ate up and I didn't realize that maybe most first class passengers merely take a small taste of every dish instead of cleaning the plate. Until the flight attendant said, wow, you guys are really good eaters. I'm impressed. Was that shade? <laughs> Next up, we opted for a light dessert of assorted fruits and mango strawberry sorbet. Delicious. After that performance of eating the entire food supply on board, I was ready for a year long nap. So the crew kindly made my bed as I changed into the sexy pajamas. They fit well and were really comfy. The bed, as always in first class, is a massive step up from business class. It's almost like a real bed and allows you to move around freely. The bedding was also plush. What bad can I say about this? 
any time I've been lucky to fly first class, the bed is the most mind-blowing part. Well, apart from showering on Emirates and Etihad. Swiss has these pretty electronic window shades that have two light settings. The drawback of these is that there's a glass panel in front of the windows so you can't easily get photos outside. This, my friends, is where most of the good stuff kind of ends and where we enter the territory of complaints. Firstly, sleeping in a bed is nice, but it's much nicer when you can control the temperature and Swiss opted against installing individual air nozzles. When you wake up and want to work, Swiss provides all first class passengers with free Wi-Fi, but only up to 50 megabytes. I'm always suspicious on planes when they give data caps because it runs out so fast. This Wi-Fi lasted less than 10 minutes of just loading basic text-based web pages. The Wi-Fi prices to buy more are ridiculously high and also data-based. I ended up just watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine for over an hour instead, which I enjoyed immensely. The headphones are pretty decent. Two more positives. What's better than mindlessly watching a show? Eating, while mindlessly watching a show. So three hours after my previous meal ended, it was time for another meal. This time the Ethiopian dish off the menu. It tasted good and I followed that with some fruits and this vegan cake. Yum. Also, prior to landing, the flight attendants who'd been serving us came through the cabin and said, and I quote, I have to tell you, it has been such a pleasure to have you on board and see how much you enjoyed everything. Your enthusiasm really means a lot to us. How sweet was that? They didn't know I'm a YouTuber and they didn't know I'd be on board beforehand. She also happened to be vegan, so we chatted for quite a long time about being vegan in France, where she lived, versus in New York or Sweden. As the wheels came down, the purser came by to thank us for being on on board and ended it by saying happy landing, which was cute. Big shout out to the lovely crew, including Elena, for the great service. Welcome to New York, guys. With that, how about I give you my initial reflections on the flight and then share the really negative part of the experience which occurred in Zurich. What you saw seemed like a pretty good flight, right? Yes, it was good, and first class is always good. But as far as first class goes, there was something missing. I think maybe for me, I crave an airline that isn't afraid to show personality and fully embrace its culture. When flying Cathay Pacific first class, you know you're flying Cathay Pacific first class because they have signature drinks that aren't available anywhere else, they have Hong Kong flavors in their food, they have Hong Kong inspired decor and more. The same with Singapore Airlines. Their crews have their iconic outfits, they play the same music every time, Time, and their crews are distinctly Singaporean. On Swiss, besides the cheese and chocolate, which unfortunately are a lot of countries claim to fame, there isn't anything that makes them super unique. It felt like flying an unbranded first class. I realize they're probably hesitant to go too far because Europeans generally like modesty, but wouldn't it be fun if they had quirky things like ski-shaped salt and pepper shakers, served bread shaped like Matterhorn, Swiss clocks on the bulkhead showing times around the world, Toblerone hot chocolate. I mean, there are so many fun things they could incorporate to set themselves apart. Yes, we want to experience luxury, but we also want something Swiss. I suspect this comes down to the majority of their passengers being Swiss, so they don't feel the same desire for Swiss cliches to be sprinkled throughout the experience. This brings me to the absolute mess that was Swiss First Class Transit. As the airline with the most first class seats in continental Europe, Swiss should nail the first class experience from start to finish. If arriving at a bus gate on Air France or Lufthansa, you get a private escort in a Porsche or Mercedes from the airplane to the first class lounge, whether you're arriving or departing in first class. Now, Swiss didn't have a first class lounge to take us to and they had a dedicated business class bus, so it's okay. However, when we left the lounge, we walked across the entire terminal only to find out again that there was no priority given for first class passengers, this time at immigration. Here's what the line looked like. 
You know, I feel bad for everyone that the line was this long, but to think that dozens of customers a day who have paid over $10,000 round trip for a first class ticket have to stand in this line for 20 minutes and don't have a Swiss staff member to escort them to the gate is absurd. Once you reach your gate, passport checks are performed on the spot with the same line for business and first class passengers. There is no seating area dedicated for first class passengers and if all the seats are taken, too bad. We happened to have issues verifying documents, so we stood at the gate for one hour. There were no apologies, no updates without us asking, and all this just made me think, couldn't Swiss have pre-verified their passengers in that depressing so-called lounge to save some time at least? In the meantime, boarding started, so they called first class passengers first, then business class passengers, and then economy class passengers. Since the flight only had 70 passengers in total, they didn't need many buses. In fact, they crammed all passengers onto one bus during COVID. Yes, first class passengers too. So something tells me Swiss needs more staffing. At Lufthansa or Air France, you once again get a private limo transfer to the airplane if it's a bus gate. Now I know people will say that when Concourse E is open, Swiss does provide a limo transfer too. That unfortunately is more of a gimmick since it drops you off at the central area of the concourse and not at your aircraft. So there's really limited benefit to it. Comparing Swiss to Lufthansa, I would say Swiss has a preferable seat. Everything else on board is pretty much exactly comparable to Lufthansa, from the food to the service and entertainment. However, Lufthansa has far better ground service. Even if flying from an outstation like Bangkok or New York, I've got private escorts who carry my bag and take me to the front of every line, walks me to the lounge, and then picks me up to take me on board. That is how first class should be done at European airlines. For me, Lufthansa is actually my preferred choice between the two. And that is good news considering how I booked. I was originally scheduled to fly British Airways in first class of all airlines. Since British Airways has cancelled their flights to Gothenburg and there were no other One World Airlines serving Gothenburg on my departure date, they had no choice but to reaccommodate me on another interline agreement partner, in this case Swiss. These circumstances are rare, and I'm not sure if this is even a limited exception due to Covid, but oh boy did I get lucky getting to try one of the world's most difficult to access first class products in place of a British Airways first class flight, which is probably the world's most accessible first class. But I'm glad that I actually prefer Lufthansa since it's much easier to redeem miles for. So thank you guys for your support and for watching the whole way through. Remember, if I reach 500,000 subscribers this year, I'll bring three of you on a Q Suite flight with me in 2022. And until I see you all next time, fly safe. So do you want to win $20,000 worth of first class flights and support an amazing cause to increase voter access with Omaze? So I'm just putting the hint out there that if you do win, please bring me as your plus one. Picture us together showering on the E380. Okay, maybe not the showering part. How about this? Picture us together having a seven course meal in Emirates first class, looking out of the windows at the beautiful view as we head on our first class flight to Australia, Japan, New York, or literally anywhere else in the world that you wanna go. Or you could bring someone even more fun than me who would be even more grateful for the opportunity to take such a luxurious trip. The best part is if you donate, you're supporting an important cause and having a huge positive impact on the world. Some bad people are doing everything they can to restrict access to voting and as a consequence damage our democracy. But luckily Headcount is here to help fight this inequality by empowering underprivileged members of the LGBTQI plus community to vote and make their voice heard. So head over to omaze.com slash nonstopdan, donate however much you feel comfortable with and you'll be entered to win $20,000 worth of first class flights. Good luck and enjoy the feeling of making a positive impact on the world with the added bonus of potentially winning an incredibly luxurious trip.